Good morning. Well, I should say it's good morning, everyone, and welcome to Ford and the Banters. I've got a special guest in there today, Stan the Man. How are you, mate? Very well, Claude. Thanks for having me on. It's about uh, just gone six o'clock in the uh, evening here in uh, Vancouver. Six o'clock in the evening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, Terry couldn't be here with us tonight because uh, he's still stuck in traffic uh, because uh, late he's overrun with his job. But I'm sure he might, make, he might join us a bit later on. Um, yeah, well, I've, today, you know, well, it's not, it's still, um, it's still Sunday over there, so it's still Dennis's birthday over there, I suppose. Yeah. Dennis Burkham's birthday, and uh, we all know the great Dennis Burkham is now 51 years old. Um, what a great player, Stan, and uh, what great memories we had of him. I can never forget when he came in um, 1995. Very excited uh, to see the signing. I was, uh, I was buzzing. I was uh, because there was a few days where they were negotiating. And then when he actually signed, it was brilliant, you know. And you know how much he's he, we bought him for? Seven point five million. Can you That's right. That? That's seven point right. five million. Yeah. What would you get for seven point five million now? Yeah, not very much. Hey. I, and I remember it, I remember it very, very vividly, Claude. And obviously back then in nineteen ninety five, this was before we had Twitter and social media and rumours, you know, and all of the usual talk before the transfer window. You know, the only thing that we had back then was the back pages of the newspapers and uh, CFAX, late night Oracle and CFAX. And um, I remember it so well because I was I knew about Dennis Bergkamp. I had a thing about Dutch football and I knew about him before I, I heard the news and I was on holiday in Ibiza. And I got up that morning and we come down on our way to the pool or we stopped off at the little shop in the hotel to get some cream and what have you. Oh, yeah, yeah. What I was doing that, I picked up the newspaper, the English paper, and there it was on the back page. And I remember it so so vividly and, and the excitement. And just thinking of it now, I'm getting a little bit of a goose pimple on my arm just thinking thinking about it. Because you know, not only if you look at the stats of what Dennis Bergkamp provided Arsenal over his time as a player. It was the signing. It, he was one of the first of the, you know, uh, decent sort of foreign players to come over to play in England. And it was a real sort of um, uh, different way of doing things for Arsenal, you know. And I think, you know, Bruce Rick was the manager at the time who didn't stay with us for that long. But I think David Dean was also very instrumental in bringing him in. And if you also remember, Claude, it was the same window that we brought in David Platt as well. Remember? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we had a row of captains then. We? we had Platt, we had Adams. They're all captains of uh, Captain England. So England captains. So I was um, quite. There were two great signings. Um, I mean, even David Platt he contributed in, uh, in our title-winning side. Big, big, big contribution he made in there. But Dennis was incredible, I mean, incredible footballer. Now, remember when he when he uh, when he first started his first season, um, when he started, he took his time to get off the, off the ground, didn't he? That's he, right. Yeah, there, was, there was a lot of stories, weren't there? You know, the, you know, the usual red top newspapers were trying to sort of stir things up. You know, that we bought a flock, and you know, the usual kind of rubbish. But it was only a matter of time. But I knew that we'd got some quality there because, as I say, I, I was aware of him. And a lot of people were bringing up the fact that, well, you know, he didn't really set the world alight when he went over to Italy. And it didn't really work out for him. But, you know, he was playing in a totally different system as a lone striker, which isn't really Dennis's thing. He always works better with a partner with him to play off of. And it, it just suited him down to the ground when he came to Arsenal. And funnily enough, I remember going to the first, the first game that he played in an Arsenal shirt. It was a little pre-season friendly against um, against Milan, and I think Paul right, yeah. was, that was a yeah, right. Paul Ince was playing for them at the time as well. Mm. Um, and I remember going to that as well. But I mean, as you say, incredible signing for the club. It really set, I think, the club on a on a, on a new path, a new way of doing things. 
And, you know, it wasn't so long after that that the, man, the new manager came in and it all started to really take shape. What's your greatest memory, though, Claude, of when you look back at Dennis? Oh, you know, so many, so memory. many memories. Um, I'll, I'll never forget the, uh, the hat-trick against Leicester, was where he three completely different goals now. Um, brilliant. I mean, brilliant hat-trick he got against them. We still drew the game. That was an incredible game there. Uh, the Newcastle goal, yeah. Where, um, Gwilly Dabizas and he spun him, spun around Dabizas and scored that great goal. So many great assists as well. He, he was not just a goal scorer, he was the assist as well. I mean, the 97 uh, 98 season, uh, the it was just incredible. I mean, him with uh, Mark Overmars in the team. And they were just to, they were just flying at the time, just flying in the second half. Just says, never mind that that game at Blackburn when we beat them four, uh, four I think it was four one then. We were four nil up at half time in the in the uh, double year, the first time we were four nil up at half time, and him he was outstanding. Uh, there's so many great memories. Of course, the only thing is um, it was that he couldn't fly. That was the only thing. European game, so that was the big drawback. Yeah, he'd set off a couple of days in advance sometimes with Vic Akers, wouldn't he? In his packed yeah, up. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't ideal, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And the ones that were really far, he couldn't make, like the Russian games, he couldn't make. Yeah. But overall, he was a, uh, such, a, such a player, man. It's, oh, dear. And I always thought that. You know, a lot of the time when I'm speaking to other Arsenal supporters and we're down the pub or what have you, or even on these podcasts and we're talking about our favourite players, you know, for me, I, I'm always tied between Bergkamp and Henri. It, it, it really does depend mm. on what you ask me is what answer you'll get because I find it so hard to separate the both of them, you know. And Different. usually Different. When, yeah. when you have players like a Bergkamp and an Henri, it's very rare to have two players at the same time at your club of that calibre. You usually get one each generation, you know, at different times. Yeah. And it was we were so lucky to have the both of them at the same time playing in the same team. It was it was just wonderful to watch. But one of the goals that stands out for me as well, you mentioned the Newcastle goal, Claude, which is my favourite goal by Dennis, mm. is the goal that uh, got us into the UEFA Cup. The last goal that he scored, Dennis, uh, if you remember, it was towards the end of the oh, season. Oh, yeah, Bolton. That was Bolton. That was actually Platt scored the... Uh, I think it was Platt scored and, and he scored. Yeah. OK. And we turned it around. We were losing one at the time and he took, they both, both got on the score sheet and turned it around in the, in the last 20 minutes. I remember that game. Yeah, it was brilliant. It was that, yeah, that's what I remember that game, yeah. That's, that's another big, good memory to, to think about. Uh, it's some good European nights in that library that he was involved in as well. I mean, uh, it was not just he's got it's not that he's insist. Um, he just his vision was incredible. He was an incredible footballer, incredible footballer, and everyone goes Henri. If you ask Henri, a lot of the goals that Henri was a lot of the goals from Henri were. Like, we're through Denny. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. You know, I mean, this. I don't know. I think. Well, I think to me, I, I just give him that edge. But it, it's hard to compare because we're different from the players. But I just, I give Burke okay, the edge for me. But then there are people who probably go on the side of one really. You know. I agree. They're very different players, but. Um... I find it. I just find. I find it so hard to not to talk about one without the other, you know. And as I say, it depends on the day that you ask me whether I say Henri or or, or Dennis. <laughs> so, what would you what do you think about um, maybe sometime in the future? I mean, Dennis uh, in one of the um, interviews I saw, I think it was the one where Ian Wright went to visit him. Uh, that you can see on YouTube. He alluded to, uh, you know, maybe at some stage coming back to Arsenal. In some kind of a capacity. Yeah, I mean, being a player and being a coach is completely uh, is another job altogether. All but I'm sure he, he'd be a good influence on the 
on the young players, on the young players at Arsenal as well as a coach. Uh, whether his management material is another is another thing altogether. But, um, yeah, maybe one day he might come back. You have to see him somewhere with another Arsenal legend. Maybe as a partnership. But, yeah, you mean like a double manager role and on the of the first team? Yeah, that's yeah. But uh, being a great player don't necessarily mean you're going to become a, a great sure. manager. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's all, so it's is all, it? It's all so, can, sorry, Max. I can I can hear an echo. On my, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. So I'm just going to say. So here's the question. And if you're saying that you'd like to see maybe Dennis come back and maybe in a double row with another Arsenal legend, who would be that second person that you would, uh, if you could pick? Well, would someone, that be? I think uh, Patrick Vieira would be great. You know, something like that. You know. Uh, because that would think they would could rub up on each other, you know, something like Patrick Vieira. But we, that's for the future. I don't know what will, will happen. But anyway, well, we've, got, um, we've got Henri over here now in Canada managing the uh, team up in Montreal. Oh, oh right. Is he, I didn't know. I thought, it was, I thought he was back in the media. Is, is he now in, in um, Canada, yeah? Yeah, he's managing the team up in uh, Montreal. So I was uh, hoping that when he comes to Vancouver to play the Whitecaps, that I'd get a ticket and go along to, for just no, like, right, you know, <laughs> what, is, what, what is the situation over there now? Is the, 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 the season is the season is not? Um... Um, well, it's the MLS season. You know, we've got a couple of teams oh, that that play in, in the same league. Right, we've got the Vancouver Whitecaps. There's a team up in Toronto yeah. as well, but. Um, I don't, to be honest with you, Claude, I don't really follow the, the US League at all. I don't know whether they're still, what you know, what their plans are for coming back or anything like that at all. Couldn't tell you. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to come on to this. I don't know what you think. I'll, I'll get this up on the, one minute. I'll just, I'm going to get this up on the, oh, where is it? There we go. Let's have a look. There we go. And it's, uh, I don't know if you can see that um, on your screen. Yeah, everyone. Can you see that, uh, Stan? Yeah. The Gunners appear to be closing on the move. We can see the signing of a young attack this summer, currently on hold. Norwegian winger, George Boy. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, What's his name? Older, uh, he's a free agent. Uh, okay. yeah, okay. the youth Frank Conzo, uh, where he signed his first, yeah. I don't know, I don't know what you think about this because we've got so many young players. Why are we going? Why are we uh going to Norway to get this guy? And it doesn't seem to be very and it's a, there's another winger as well. I mean, we've got we're, we've got wingers that are awful. we've got young, we've got Reece Nelson, we've got we've got Saka, we've got uh, Martinelli that can play there. We've got, you know, I mean, I don't I don't understand what what's the what's the uh, why are we why are we going after these type of players. What do you think about that? Well, I've never heard of the player for a start, and I'm and I'm not I'm, and I'm not surprised that we're looking at free players and players on loan because obviously we, we're being told that we haven't got any money but i'd be inclined to agree with you it doesn't make any sense to me why we would even entertain looking at another winger because we seem to have a wealth of players already in those positions right like you say and um if he's going to come in he's only going to get in either get in someone's way of development or he's not going to get the game time in, himself so i'd be inclined to uh, agree with you but then again i mean there's how many players we've been linked with at the moment, you know. I mean, it's probably easier right now, Claude, to draw, draw up a list of the players in, that play football that we're not linked with. Do you know what I mean? We seem to be just linked with everyone. I've, you know, Willian, a few weeks ago before Willian, it was um, Jesse Lingard. I'm hearing that the deal for that yeah. back from PSG is still on the table for a five-year deal for that left back from PSG. So it's really hard to know what really is going on, isn't it? 
Yeah, because I don't. Are these players really what we need? We're looking. We should be going for defensive midfield, and um, and also uh, centre halves. So why are we looking in these positions? I don't know. But that's a weird. That is a weird. Um, a weird yeah. uh, song, song if it does come up because uh, I know we're. I know it is because of the money situation is. So we'll be looking at free transfers and swap deals, but seems a bit seems a bit strange to me. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. Unless it's one of these kids that they're looking at maybe as a long-term prospect, he'll come in and then, you know, he'll go like the Joel Campbell route or the Wellington Silver route of going out on loan for a few seasons, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just... I don't understand these signings, George Lewis. Where, where do they get these players? Where the oh, dear. They were less awful for you. Anyway. Typical Arsenal. I mean, um, what, what, uh, today we've had the lockdown today over um, uh, the lockdown talk on our. I mean, what is the situation over where you are today? Well, um, lockdown. Well, it was funny because I was talking to someone in the UK just the other day and he was saying that, well, at least, you know, things like McDonald's and KFC and that will open. And I was like, well, they never shut here. So, mm. I mean, if you go out where I live in Vancouver, you know, McDonald's, Burger King, those kind of places are still open to go in and get a takeaway. Kebab shops, places like that are still open. Obviously, no bars are open, no restaurants are open unless they offer a takeout service. Yeah. Um, the supermarkets are still open. They don't sell alcohol in supermarkets. So you've got to go to a separate store. Like you've got to go to the liquor store. They're still open. You can go and get cannabis from the dispensary. That's still open. But you can't go to your bank because that's closed. You can't go and buy a pair of shoes because the retail outlets are closed. So for me, as I kind of observing it, it's kind of like for me, the lockdown has been half, half in and half out. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's yeah. like you know what I mean. It's like I can go, I can go and get a kebab, and I can go and get some weed and some beer, but I can't go to my bank. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's either we're either locked down or we're not. So I'm a little bit confused as to what it is that they they've been trying to achieve with it. And if you go down to our supermarkets, they're doing the old, you know, you got a queue. They're only letting in so many at a time, and, and all of that. But they've been talking, as I think everywhere's been talking that they're going to be looking at perhaps relaxing the lockdown or whatever. I don't know what that's going to look like. So, Yeah, because over here, I mean, uh, it's, it's now saying that people can... I know, it's a strange one over here because now they're, they're, he's relaxing it. Yeah, it's a little bit of relax, but we're, uh, slightly relaxing it. But uh, he's saying now that people now can um, go into work. <laughs> but also, but going to work, they have to. If they if they can't work from home and they need to go to work, they can go in. But of course, keep with the, uh, keeping that uh, yeah. distance to me. I also talking about without having to use public transport. Uh, public transport, and uh, <laughs> he's telling people to walk. <laughs> And, and uh, bike it in, but there's people who are not being funny. They're not. It's miles. Some people have yeah. to work where they work have to work going to miles in central London. So, so <laughs> people that they, if they want to go in, they should not be used so much um, public transport. It's getting it's getting really stupid. I mean, it's ridiculous now. I think really, to be honest with you, they should just keep it as it is at the moment until we get. Until it gets down, but it's all to do with money, isn't it? It's all to do with money. Well, I wouldn't want to be um, travelling on the London Underground at the moment at all. Mm. You know, I would not fancy no. doing the journey. I, you know, if you. I, I don't want to go out. I don't really want to go at the moment. Even if they told me now, the oh, it's okay to go out uh, for a little. I don't really want to go because I still think it's. Don't think it's down at the level at the moment. And so we've had uh, really nice weather here as well, like the last few days, mm. and today in particular, it's you know really warm. And um, you know, I went out for a walk around the block, and I went out yesterday as well. But it really kind of looks like here, 
Whereas it was really quiet, quiet a week or so ago. It, I was out yesterday and I said to my missus, this looks like lockdown's over. Everyone was out, the cars were in traffic jams on the, on the street, whereas the other day, like, there wasn't a car in sight. So, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, to be honest with you, with you Claude, you know what I mean? All I know is, is that, do you know what I mean? They're telling us that it's still not over. So, I, I, don't know, I think I'd be inclined to agree with you as well that, I'd rather wait just a little bit longer and be sure, yeah. right? Exactly. Right back, and then it's because I mean, just you know, going back into football, some players in Brighton have now recently tested uh, yeah. positive again. Some players, I think, over in Germany, and they were planning Germany, to be next, next week. week. Next week, next week in Germany. Um, How's that going to work now? If players are starting to test positive. I mean, it it's does. <laughs> Couple class for the fans, apparently. <laughs> It's, uh, it's ridiculous, man. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I've got another thing. I mean, I've got another thing here to talk about here while we're here. While we are, and it's uh, this one. I don't see Mike, Mike Tyson. Oh yeah. No, can you see that? Mike Tyson only returned to the fight. I'm going to fight boxers. Fifty-three-year-old legend doesn't want to insult the sport, so he's only. Uh, you will make a sensational return to fight another bona fide boxer. You don't, I suppose, you don't want no uh, gimmicks or anything like that. It's shot, but yeah. So, what do you feel about that? I mean, the, wow. one is called is uh, an Aussie matchmaker offered Tyson a five hundred thousand charity bout against New Zealand rugby star boxer Sonny Bill Williams. And even and even Tyson's Fury father, an ex heavyweight John Fury, fifty four friend, he's prepared to die in the ring and trying to beat Tyson. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Um, well, I, I tell you what, I saw a video. It was uh, just earlier in the week that they put out of him. They showed him doing like some sparring and that, you know, hitting the guy who had the, the body pads on. Mm. And I tell you what, mate, I was shitting myself just watching him. He was powerful as you know he looked like he still had it mike tyson but i mean i don't think it's going to be like a george foreman one is it i don't think this is like a bona fide comeback where he's going to try and you know and get back into the heavyweight scene i think this might just be exhibition exhibition uh fighting and um it's funny as well because i think evander holyfield has said that he's also going to come back and do some uh exhibition uh charity stuff so would you think that the chances could be of seeing maybe Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield perhaps getting back in the ring together after all this well, time? Well, that would be interesting. As long as he doesn't bite his ear off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not sure about, I'm not sure about John Fury. Um, do you know what I mean? I'm not, I, I I'm not sure about that, but... I mean, the, the the sparring video, though, of Mike Tyson, it, it was, uh, he looked like he still meant business. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't have wanted, I wouldn't have wanted to have been that bloke who was wearing them body pads, put it that way. No, no, no thanks. What's your thoughts on it, Claude? Someone is saying that our oh, sound is not great. Sorry, Lee. Sorry, uh, Lee. Uh, the, this, there is a problem with the sound tonight, I'm afraid. Uh, we do apologise, but... It's my, my it's my end, and I'm finally I'm coming on the um, last minute because uh, Terry couldn't make it tonight. So I do apologise for that. Uh, no, I uh, I don't think these fights are good for the. To be honest with you, 53 years old. You know, you want to see these fighters when they're at their peak. Don't you? Not now. You don't really want to see it now. It's not. Not even for like an exhibition, not saying, I mean, I don't, as I say, I don't think this is like a Joe Foreman style, like proper comeback, do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, but I don't know, it just it don't, it doesn't seem right to me, I don't, I don't, I don't, you want to remember, we want to remember boxers when they were great, don't you, when they were yeah. there, you don't want to see two, two guys, uh, it's like, you know, you, you Dennis, but uh, I mean, Dennis would we still play well, but it's not the same if someone like football that goes out at 55 and starts playing. It's not the same, is it? It's, it's, not. 
it, it's funny because before I heard about this Mike Tyson comeback, it was just a few weeks ago. Um, there's a YouTube channel, I think it's called Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson, and it's Mike mm. Tyson. He's interviewing people, other boxers uh, and other sort of like various celebrities. And I was watching a clip of one and he was talking about how much he really does miss it. You know, like he feels like now that he's not boxing, that he doesn't feel like he's anything. And he got quite emotional about it and was like uh, really tearing up. And then uh, lo and behold, it's literally like a, a month later or so. And I'm hearing that he's making a comeback. So it's obviously been playing on his mind. Do you know what I mean? And I think he said in the story that uh, he put it that the, the boxing gods have reawoken him. But he did look like he meant business in the training. He still, he looked, you know, I mean, but, I mean, do you remember George Foreman though when he made his comeback? He was like, what, 48? Yeah. He yeah, yeah. Back and uh, he, he, he won his belt back in the end, didn't he? He got there in the end. Yeah. And I don't yeah. think, he, I don't think he was doing it for the money because he was getting, he was getting quite a lot in off of them, uh, then barbecue, George Foreman barbecue things, right? He was getting a load of dough in from that. I think it's like, um, I think it's to do with like the ego, right? Of just being good at something that you used to be able to do and then you stop doing it. Do you know what I mean? And that, and then you realise that the one thing that you really are good at, you're not doing that anymore. And something probably drives you to want to be able to get back to what you were doing, I suppose. You know what I mean? Muhammad Ali, he, he, went, he went on far, far longer than what he should have. I was watching a documentary about him quite recently and that last fight with Muhammad Ali and Larry Holmes, you know, it was, oh, it was, really, it was really sad to see that, you know, like, you know, he was basically just, just getting smacked about. And Larry Holmes afterwards said that it was one of the hardest things that he's ever done because he was such a legend to him when he was coming up in the sport, you know? Yeah, there's certain times, certain ways, after certain... These fights, from, uh, that's the once you pass the big and you've done that, just retire, man. It's not, it's not, it's not good. It's not a good seat because you want to remember, you want to remember people, uh, boxers for when they were great. Man. You don't want to remember them from uh, in a bad way, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, let's have a look at the cine comments here. Yeah, a lot of uh, See the any comments. Yeah, that's it. The best speed rider, the best speed, work and go, the Leicester go, the Newcastle go, the Sun, all the way down. The Leicester Sun go, the FA Cup. Yeah, that was a great goal as well, yeah. And that was another one, yeah. It was real, and they, 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 they couldn't it not working. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, you remember it. Yeah, yeah. You've got good memory as well, haven't you? <laughs> I remember that because I think I'd uh, wasn't it wasn't that match kind of like around the new year time of year like early just maybe like a couple of days after new year or something like that I'm sure I'd been traveling away somewhere and I come back in and the game had already started and it was one of them ones where I was trying to rush home to get to the game and I come in and that's just as I come in I'd been in like five minutes they were doing the old they were doing that and I just managed to catch it yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They beat us in the league, and then we beat them in the cup. If you can remember that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Um, uh, there's a few people going on, but there's a few West Ham fans on here tonight going on about uh, Trevor Brookings' goal. Yeah, I remember it. Don't we? Uh, in the final at Wembley. Do you know? Do you know what I remember the most about that that game? Again, I was a. Uh, I'm actually I'm actually one of them, Claude, that has a bad memory. I can't remember scores and the ins and outs like some some of the guys on on the podcast can. But I do have like vivid memories about certain ones, and I do remember school holidays going over the Adventure Playground to watch the FA Cup final, and I just remember Willie really Young. <laughs> That yeah, was a yeah. really, really young, wasn't it? When he chipped yeah, up, he, he yeah, chipped that up was, Paul Allen. That was the uh, youngest player in the final at the time, wasn't he? Um, Paul Allen, wasn't it? Um, yeah. And he was free. That would have been a red now, and that would have been a red card now because he was he completely chopped him up, didn't he? Right on goal, wasn't he? Yeah. That yeah. would have been a red card. 
the, the rules, of course, have all changed. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was in there. That, I remember that because that's the one game, he, he very rare to have a Brooklyn score with a, with his head. And they made that's a big right. okay, yeah. They made a big And I'll never forget that year because we put so much effort in the two cup competitions. We had that four, five games against Liverpool. Right, and then it, we lost to the West Ham in the final. I think we took his oh, because after we played Valencia in the Cup Winners' Cup final, we got beat in that as well. Was that the so, penalty shootout? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the that's the first time I ever cried about a football game. Rosie I, and Ricks, I'm a Graham Ricks fan as a kid. I was yeah. a big Graham Ricks fan, and I remember sitting on my bed watching that on the black and white TV. And it was funny because I'd said to my mum. Can I watch it in the in the front room on the colour TV? And she's like, no, you've got a black and white portable. That's what we got it for. And I was sat there watching it. And when he missed that penalty, I burst out into tears. And my mum must have been watching it in the, in the other room to see what was going to happen. Because as soon as he missed it, she come running in to consult me. <laughs> yeah, no, not great memories. I mean... Um, oh, uh, in that game as well, it was Brady missed his penalty as well, didn't he? Yeah, not because we, that's another. We made such a great effort to get to that final, beating um, was it Juventus in the semi final, wasn't it? Uh, was it the semi final of Juventus in the semi final with Batten scored in the last minute? Don't have a good memory about that. Yeah, I remember the final though very much. And we've yeah, done all that. And, uh, yeah, we must have played over loads of games that year. We had all that run. run. And uh, uh, I think we have a run on the season because we played so many games. So we still had another look, two league games after to qualify for the year. We failed to qualify, but we beat Wolves, but then we got thrashed by Middlesbrough. I think it was Middlesbrough thrashed us. But if I remember right, I'm not very good at that. But uh, I do remember that year. That was really heartbreaking. Because we put so much into it, um, that was heartbreaking. Um, what are you saying about this documentary about Thierry Henry documentary? Oh, that was um, a real, really worth a watch. Mm -hmm. On the YouTube channel, the Arsenal YouTube channel, yeah. they've been uh, releasing these videos, they're calling them legends. And wow. the first one was the Dennis Bergkamp one. A couple of weeks ago which was very good and what's so good about it is and i've seen quite a, a few dennis Bergkamp once documentaries but it's they usually have other players and other people talking about dennis and then they show you the clips but on this one you know it was dennis front and center taking you through his whole career and then two days ago they just released another one on their youtube channel um but this is a thierry Henry one and again, you've got Thierry there taking you through his whole career. Um, they've got clips of all of his finest moments, you know, other people talking about him as, as well. And it's funny how they contrasted because with the Burkamp one, when I was watching that one, it brought back a lot of good memories and I was smiling a lot through that one. But I have to admit, by the end of the Thierry Henry one, when they replayed his goodbye message to the fans at the time when he left us, and I think it's probably the first time that I've seen it since the, when it originally came out. You could really see the passion. And watching the Thierry Henry one, you really get the feeling that, you know, this guy is a fan of the club. He really is. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't just say the sorts of things that footballers say about clubs. You can really hear, even right down to in certain situations, you can hear the bias in his opinion because he's an Arsenal fan like what you and I would have in certain situations, you know? Ten, and then, ten, sorry, go on. So, sorry, sorry, because I, I don't mean to, do, it's just that there's such um, an interference on the line. You know? I'm, I'm interrupting you, but I didn't, sorry about that. Uh, Chadwick's come on there, it's on the, the Super Chat, thanks for that. He said, not sure about you guys, but I can't take another year of Europa League. Four straight flipping years. Bullshit. I can't believe Arsenal where they are now. Yeah, unfortunately, Chadwick, that's the situation we're in. 
We don't even know. I don't even think there might be might not be any European football next year, the way things are going. Uh, I don't know about you, Stan, isn't it? I mean, well, I mean, I'm always, because of the time difference, I'm always going to miss being in you in, in Europe because they, you know, the kickoff times will be lunchtime here, which means I can be in the pub and I can have a cold pint and watch the game as opposed to like yeah. 4.30 in the morning. So I'm a little bit selfish when it comes to playing in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm going on about Henri. I, I mean, I'm, when he first came, I was a bit... Uh, he had, he had a, he was another one that took a bit of time to settle in when he, when he actually came into the team. Because when he came, when he, I remember losing an elk. I was gutted to lose an elk. Yeah, and he went around. Uh, when he got to Real Madrid, didn't he? And for a lot of money, I know we got a lot of money for him at the time. And there was uh, everyone was looking for him. And when he first came, he was missing a lot of chances, wasn't he? When he first came to the team. And then he got that brilliant goal. I think it was against Southampton away, uh, where he put in the you know, corner. Brilliant goal. And he never looked back after that, did he? He was uh, outstanding. Outstanding. No. You know, he was scoring goals out of nowhere. You know, the times he got us out of trouble as well were just individual brilliance. You know what I mean? My, uh, another amazing player, and you know, <laughs> you, we we were small. Well, we was really small, wasn't we? I mean, you think about it, we were really small then. Because it's, we're it's, not, very, it's very rare to have two players in your team at the same time being who are that good. You know, you, you'd be glad just to have one of them. You know, and maybe they'd be years apart before you'd get another player like that. So, so to have both Burkamp and Henri. In the team together, well, we were very fortunate to have that, and it's probably going to be a long time before we ever see anything like that again at Arsenal. But on the on the going back to that documentary, uh, it got to the part where he came back. Remember when he came back for a couple of months after he left us, mm. and he said, you know, he said that when he came on for that Leeds game and you know scoring that goal in in that game against Leeds. He said of all the things that he's done, you know, World Cups, Champions League games and what have you, he said nothing will ever repeat that feeling. You know, he never ever thought, he never imagined in his wildest dreams that he was going to come back and play another game for Arsenal, you know? Yeah, it was against Leeds, isn't it? When he came back yeah. against Leeds, he'd come off, off the beach. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he was also he also told another good story that I think it was um, the last season at Highbury, the last derby game against Tottenham, and he was on the bench because there was a European game coming up and they wanted to save him, and he was really pissed off because he was thinking to himself like it's going to be the last derby game at Highbury, and there's no way you know we can let them have like the better result, and then he ended up coming on uh, with half an hour to go. And he scored that goal, which led to that, you know, the famous pose of the statue with the knee slide. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I remember that, yeah, yeah. But just the way that he talks about some of these these things, you know, and he also spoke about when we won the league up at Man United. And he said mm. that, you know, before the game, that the, 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 the team was spoken to about, you know, they only needed to, we only needed to draw or get the win and we'd win the league. And, you know, the team was asked, please don't celebrate, don't go mad, you know, because we don't want to, you know, we don't want to cause any any aggro in the crowd. But after, if you remember Tottenham, uh, sorry, this is a game, not Manchester United, at Tottenham. We won the league at Tottenham. And Tottenham went two goals up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, we went two, sorry, we went two goals up and then they came back. And the way that they were celebrating, he said that, you know, Tariko was jumping up and down right in front of him. And he was saying, like, I, I couldn't believe it that their mentality was that they were celebrating a draw against their rivals, like they'd won the World Cup, you know. And uh, it was after seeing, he said, seeing Tariko celebrate like that that he decided that they, he was going to celebrate after the game, even though they'd agreed not to, and they were going to run over to the fans and, you know, take his shirt off and celebrate. So it was, it's, if you've not seen it, Claude, it's it really is worth a watch. It's a good trip by memory lane. 
Yeah, I, I remember. I do. I do. With with uh, how can I put it? With one really, you will never see that like again, will you? I don't think you'll ever see that type of player again. Yeah, oh. Especially at Arsenal, especially with the way things are going at the moment. Um, I'm going to draw you on 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 on, on this on uh, on. Right. Can you see the screen now? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Right. I'm going to draw you on this one. It's um for everyone. The team of the season. The pre- this is what it makes me up. BBC's Premier League team of the season. And they've got Bruno Fernandes, who's played about five games in the team, wow. of, the in the team of the season. I don't know what your thoughts on this. I mean, how many how many games has there been in the seat? How many games was there in the season before we stopped? Was that twenty something, right? Yeah, so well, there was no, twenty eight games, and when it went all off. Uh, you'd, yeah, you'd think that you'd have someone in there, right? He's he's probably had a bit more games under their belt but i mean has he has he been that good i don't really know i don't i've not really seen a lot of him to be fair but i know that um i know that a lot of the man U fans you know they really like this guy yeah well i'm looking at this team now and this team is looking at well, that's a big surprise for me fernandez because i'm sorry how can you be a player that, i don't know where they get this from anyway um and then you've got you've got Ingo allison with well, all right, let it, I suppose because it's Liverpool. But yeah. I, I mean, he's had a few dodgy games this season, I think, as well. I think he even got sent off in one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they've got Alexander Arnold, Van Dyke, and Robertson. Yeah, that, fair enough. I, I would say, uh, Sionko, I think that's a great job. I think I'd even put Johnny Evans there for this season, there, I thought, in, in that back four. Uh, We've got De Bruyne, Henderson. Henderson is my player of the season. So I agree with that one. Okay. Um, Fernandes, I can't understand. Then you've got the front three. And they've got Salah, Mane. I don't, I don't think, I think they've played well, but I've not been as good as last year. The, two. But the one I'm most surprised is Aguero. And I'm, I'm sure um, I would have put a Bamiang in front of Aguero. But it, it's. Um, it's a bit of a strange one. Now. I, I don't know who, who, who. What do you think? What's your opinion on that team? I'm a little bit, a little bit surprised that Sionko might be in there. And I remember when we were linked with him a couple of seasons ago as well. But by all accounts, he's had a good, he's had a good season. Fernandez as well. Bruno Fernandez. I maybe could have thought of a couple of other players uh, that could have gone in there. Um, the other one uh, was his name, Bruno Fernandez, maybe at Man City. The other one, you know, or David Silva. I don't know. But you're saying a Bamiang for Aguero? It's a close one. Either or, isn't it? Really, it's a, not a lot in it. Not a lot yeah, in it. They're going right up on that level, isn't they? They're really close, them two. Even Jamie Vardy's got a shout there as well. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I really yeah. don't. I mean, I think he's had a great season. I just thought I find it's a, it's. it's not really being thought. I don't know how they come to these. How you can play? I still can't get over that. How they can play? Put a player there to play five games all season. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Um, yeah, but that's that's <laughs> what can you say? <laughs> that's uh, that that's amazing. That amazing thing. I mean, oh. So what do you reckon, Stan? Do you think that we'll, we'll have a... Uh, what would you, uh, what's your real point? I'm not asking you about this. What, do you think we, uh, the, the season should be void or can't? I mean, there's a difference. They cancel it, they, they leave it on the positions that they're in. Or do you well, think they should just void this season? I mean, how do, you, how do you see it? I've got my own opinion. I don't know whether it's a popular one or an unpopular one, but I think uh, that we should void the season and if it's not a case that the season can, if you can't restart the season, then I don't think you should give Liverpool the the league the the, the, the league. If they restart it and the games are finished, fine. If the, if we don't start it this season and they do something like they restart the season next season and finish it then and then go into next season, fine. 
But if they decide to void it and no games get replayed for this season and then we restart next season, then I don't see how you can hand out trophies. I just don't. And I know that I've, I know that you're maybe I know that you're of a different opinion, Claude. I know that, right? I've heard you talking with some of the guys, right? But and I also heard you say as well that you know Arsenal fans, if you were in this position, you would be saying, you know, we should be given the the. No, what I'm trying to say is, I, I'm I'm just saying I've heard a lot of certainly um, people that are quite um, who do the fan cams who are quite high up in the fan cams who do. Very popular. Uh, say they would, uh, they, we should avoid the season. And I'm just saying, if it was Arsenal, uh, they, they wouldn't be having that same attitude because it's just natural. You wouldn't want it. Would you? You're 25. I'm happy about that. If I was in, if I was in, if if this if this was happening to us now, we were in this position where we were on our way to winning our first uh, our league title, playing champagne football just like Liverpool had, and we were this far ahead. And then, you know, football was halted like it is now. Obviously, I'd be gutted. I'd be absolutely, like, gutted about it. But I would always feel a little bit um, funny about just taking, taking, you know, taking it that we've won this league. Because in years to come, you know, as we move on, no one's ever going to talk about this season. It's never going to be really remembered. And if it's brought up, it's always going to be followed by, oh, what, you mean this season when everyone just gave you the cup? It's never going to be right, and I'm yeah. a bit. Of, I'm a bit of a completionist, you know. Like I was always. Oh like, no! Uh, for me, I'd rather see. The, I want the season to finish, but I'd rather. Uh, for me, I'd rather. I'd rather. How can I put it? I'd rather they try and finish the season first. Yeah. The first option, and then that, yeah. maybe the next option. But my that would be my next option is to do it that way rather than avoid it. But my first option would be to. To win it deservedly and get the oh, game through yeah. the line, but yeah, I know where you're coming from. I know what you're saying. No, don't get me wrong, but I do know there are fans that, if they're all, there are. I mean, you're you are an exception, and I agree with. You. But there are fans that will have that wouldn't have that attitude though, because uh, we all say, oh, it's not our team, is it? Well, it's all very well when we're we're sitting ninth and we can say, I'll avoid the season. Oh yeah, of course. I'm yeah. saying, yeah. And I do feel for them. I mean, I mean, I know they've waited a long time for it, but I mean, you've got to finish the season and it's got to be done right for the integrity of the game. I mean, other leagues in other countries have decided to to, to stop their to stop their leagues, right? If we can't restart it and get it done, then I just think that we start the season next next year and everyone is back where they were at, at the beginning of this season. It's almost like this season didn't happen. We start in the same places and playing for the same things, but who knows, Claude? Uh, this is uh, Stan. I watched the Henry documentary, and it was really good. It was it's sad to hear the view, his view of the Barcelona game and how the game played out with ten men. He must have made a mention about the. But then he could have won it. He could have won it. That game, he was clear on goal, but I don't know whether it was because he was tired or what. It was tired. Uh, yeah. yeah. That yeah. part he had, he should have buried it to make it two 0 we, we wouldn't have had to worry about being playing with ten men. So, you know, watching that back on that documentary, I've not watched that. I've never watched that match back, and I always try to avoid it because at the time, like, I was fuming. And when I saw. When I saw the night lights back, Lord, I, I was still fuming. <laughs> I was still fuming watching it back mm. just the other day. But yeah. he did mention um, about that chance, and he said that he just had nothing left in his legs. Do you know what I mean? He said mm. he didn't have any his legs, but he said that that's one of the things that still haunts him. You know, he he thinks about it quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. So there's another one here. Kind of a comment. What's this? Uh, let's read this. Lauren, the most underrated player. That season for Arsenal, yeah, very underrated, uh, Dan. Very underrated. Um, top, top player. Yeah. Even I loved him. And he, he took over from Lee Dixon. He came out to us as a midfield player. That's so right. Took, yeah. yeah, really top right back. He was a tremendous player, tremendous player. Uh, very good no nonsense. You know, a very much a team player. 
very much a team player, but very good at really good at going about his business and just didn't take any nonsense. Con very consistent. Uh, what's your opinion on uh, Arteta? Um... Oh, I'm very happy. I mean, when it was all going about him being appointed, I, I, I'll admit to you, he wasn't my first pick. Not because, you know, I was anti Arteta. I was just a little bit worried about, you know, bringing in a, a, a manager to manage a club the stature of Arsenal and it would essentially be his first, his first rodeo. So I was a little bit concerned about that. But I have to say that since he has been in, you know, I think he's been doing a good job. You could definitely see that progress was being made under Arteta compared to how the team was playing under Unai Emery. And I could definitely see that we were turning a corner. And what I really liked the other day was, um, I don't know if you saw that video where Ian Wright done his uh, online phone call and he was speaking to Arteta and he interviewed him. And I love listening to Arteta because he says all the right things. He says all the things that I want to hear coming out of the mouth of an Arsenal manager. But my only worry is, is that if that team, the current team that we have, isn't turned over and he's not backed by the board, then all of those words, those good words, it's going to all be for nothing because he's, he's going to need yeah. help. He is going to need help. That, that, that is, that's for true. And it depends what the recruitment are going to do. Um, but it's it's all it's, we'll see how it goes. But then then again, having said all that, the ball will have a lot of excuses about the money situation because at the end of the day, they're not going to they can't up for one hand say give twenty um, twelve percent cuts to the players and then decide to throw eighty or ninety million pounds. Exactly. Play. So it's yeah. going to be interesting to see how that. But it's, that's there. It's, that'll be a good excuse for them to come out with. But then we got we don't know when we're going to see football again anyway. Right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, but you're you're you definitely are happy with our town, Yeah. You're definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Me, me, myself personally, I've got to be honest with you. Is. Uh, Oh yeah, we both love Mark Overmars. I love Mark Overmars. Yeah, thanks Chadwick for that. Yeah, we did both like. Uh, yeah, I love Chaw Standard as well. <laughs> Mark yeah. Overmars. He, he's one of those players, Claude, that I wished had stayed at Arsenal longer than what he did. Do yeah, you know, he when he went to Barcelona, they still got over another hundred games out of him, right? And I and I see him one time. I used to live in Spain, and I used to go to Malaga. And Barcelona come there, and uh, I see Mark Overmars still running up and down the wing. Great player, so direct. Uh, great goals, great assists. And as I say, I, I, he's one of those, a bit like Nicolas Sanelka, would have liked him to have stayed at Arsenal a bit longer. Yeah, yeah. But, he didn't, but having said that, we, we brought Perez in, so I don't think we suffered that much. Although no. uh, we... we uh, Perez was uh, even a better, better football. Much, I think a better football. Overmars had a lot of pace, but he was. But uh, Perez was slightly more um, silky. Silky, yeah. That's how we uh, was like, uh, looking for the word there. Silky, yes. Right, uh, I'm going to call it because there's a lot of noise in the background, so I'm going to call it a night, uh, Stan. Uh, okay. Thank you to all the people in the comments. Uh, um, thank you, Stan, for coming on. I know, uh, as you say, it's uh, it's three o'clock. It's near, near three o'clock in the morning. There, it must be about seven over there now. Yeah, just yeah. coming up at seven, Claude. <laughs> anyway, thanks, thanks for coming on, and um, we'll hopefully do this again sometime again. I think Terry will be back next week. I'm, I'm sure. I'm unfortunately got held up somewhere tonight, but. He'll be back. I'm sorry about the sound on on the um, on the internet. I've had a lot of problems. I think it's because everyone is using it now. This maybe it's that's what it is. Nothing can be helped. Anyway, take care, everyone, and uh, see you in a week. Tomorrow is a good day. The Premier League show tomorrow. We have a fan from Watford. We've got a fan from Man City, and I think who's the other and one from West Ham. So. That should be good tomorrow night, come seven o'clock. Hope to see you all then. And take care, everyone. Goodbye for now.